So let's get started. First thing, when we talk about calendar, many of us are working from home. Many of us work with customers who are in other countries. By default, Outlook shows us our standard time zone. So, so now, now, when, when we, talk we talk about, about Outlook, Outlook calendar, calendar, we, we normally, normally see one, one time, time zone. zone. We, we may be working, working across, across various, various countries, countries and, and we, we want, want to see other, other time, time zones, zones as, well. as well. How do, How we, do, do, we, do we do that? Question, Question is, I want, I want to see, to see my, my time, time zone, zone as well as other time zones. How do we do that? That is the question. So now what do we do to make this happen? Very simple. We go to the timeline, which is shown here and right click. And then we go to change time zone. When we go to change time zone, what happens? We can actually see one time zone, which is default. And then we have a second and a third option. You can enable two or three, depending on how many time zones you want. Now, what do you do here? First of all, you select the time zone. In this case, I have chosen New Zealand time zone. And this label remains blank. You have to type it. It is important to type the label. The label does not come automatically. And other important thing is whatever time zone you have chosen, the label should match. Suppose I put something else here, I will confuse myself. So be careful. So here I have chosen New Zealand, NZ, Singapore, SG, and then click OK. So now I have three time zones. What is the benefit of that? Let's say I have a set of people in all three places, and I want to find a time where everyone is working. So now I can clearly see that this is the time I, which is suitable for everyone. That's how managing multiple time zones is good. Now you may have questions. Please keep posting the questions. I will address all the questions. Now let's go to the next topic. That was about time zones. Now categorizing meetings. You will notice that in my calendar, each meeting has a different color. That's important. Why? Because some meetings may be arranged by you. Some meetings, someone else has arranged and you're attending. So bare minimum, you should have that clarity. What clarity should you have? Which is my meeting and which is others meeting? Doesn't that make sense? So color code this thing. How do you color code? Very simple. Right click and choose categorize. If you have never used categories, you will still see some colors, but they'll be called pink category green category, something like that. You should rename them so that each color has a meaning to you. How do we do that? You go to all categories for the first time. Let's say there's a default category called green category. You can always enable this and say, okay, this is green category. But tomorrow, what does green mean? You're going to forget. So give it a name. So click on rename. How many colors do we have? In older version of Outlook, we had just six colors. Now we have 25 colors to choose from. So problem is if you choose a color, tomorrow you're going to forget what that color meant. That's why it forces you to put a name. So this is a category, which is the name, and there is a color. That's why this is called color categories. Fine. So 
how many you should use entirely up to you but use it to your advantage to not only segregate your meetings and other meetings you can use it by project you can use it by priority you can classify it as strategic or tactical entirely up to you use these colors in the context of your work now these colors are not limited to calendar the same color coding you can use for flagging contacts or emails or tasks so that's how just at a glance you know others work is this and my work is blue so you can get a picture very easily now that is about categorizing meetings of course we can go and uh, search and when you go to search i may want to search based on a category so the moment you click on search notice there is a category and there i want to see something else i can actually check which category is resulting into what so that's how you get use of category for filtering purpose as well fine so that's about color categories now let's think about time what do we use time for in calendar it looks like what do you see in calendar is only meetings either your meetings or someone else's meetings that's fine but there is another use of calendar ideally what you should be doing is all your tasks should be in the task folder that is step number 1 so whatever is your pending work it's a very very good idea to go to outlook task folder and put it there where is outlook task folder you go to tasks in outlook it's here so you go to email calendar tasks in task not to do the task folder when you go to the task folder you can add task a quick way of adding task is from here a detailed way of adding task is from here fine so now make a master list of your work in the task folder now you know what is pending you can go to one place sort filter prioritize that is just step number 1 what is step number 2 you want to actually find time to do this work and that is important that is what you do in calendar so what do you do in calendar open the calendar like we have already done here then right click on the task folder this is calendar then right click on the task folder and then say open in new window in which case you will see your tasks now what do you do make this window small so that you can see your tasks as well as your time both you are now able to see together so now you go from top to bottom and say oh this is going to require lot of time so let me find time let me do it here so this is how you are planning your work more effectively that's what i mean step 1 create a task list step 2 is find time to do that work and that is how in the calendar now there are lot of meetings where it is your work and you have taken an appointment with yourself to do your work this is very important this is actually called time management finding time to do your own work is time management the more proactively you do it the better then of course there is multiple calendars why would you want multiple calendars maybe your colleagues or subordinates have shared calendars with you maybe you have a holiday calendar for your company whatever it is you can and open multiple calendars so you say you can see there i have multiple calendars so i am opening two calendars now right now this is the calendar for boss let's say this is the calendar for assistant notice what is happening now two calendars open at the same time now if you look at today for example what is going to happen today is today but this is also thursday 22 this is also thursday 22 so suppose there was an appointment here as well and here as well now you can't really make out is there an overlap or not because they are two 
separate columns. So how do you combine them visually? That's where this particular button comes into picture, this arrow. This is called view in overlay mode. Remember, this is someone's calendar. This is some different calendar. We are not copy pasting the calendars together. We are just overlaying them together. So now you see there is a color here, green color here. So they get merged. So now you can actually see both the calendars together. This is called overlay mode. Right now I put only two calendars. You can have any number of calendars on top of each other. Very, very useful feature. Another way of using this calendar, let's say I'm only using my calendar. Fine, I am planning my day. So you go to daily view. But now there is some work here and I want to plan that work in greater detail. So I've just created a calendar for myself called micromanagement. It's empty right now. So let's say this calendar is something I'm doing for one and a half hours and I want to break it down further. That I can do here. This is currently at 30 minutes interval. I'm going to go to 10 minutes interval. So notice what is going to happen now. This work which I was planning to do has expanded. So now I can say preparation I do here. Then the next step, let's say I'm doing a presentation, find images I will do here like that. This is not a real calendar. This is a dummy calendar. How do you create a new calendar like this? Right click, add calendar, new calendar, simple. So that's micromanagement, breaking down a big piece of work into smaller pieces so that you can manage them better. So that's a micromanagement calendar and multiple calendars together. Very nice. Now, another thing we often need is let's say I am just using one calendar for now and I will go to weekly view, monthly view, something like that. What can you see now? One month and maybe some previous Mondays, some next Mondays. That's it. Now I want to select all of them together. How is that possible? If I do selection, doesn't work. If I uh, they control A, that is not going to work. So suppose I want to select multiple things and do something to it. It's just not possible. So what do you do? That's where the view menu comes into picture. So go to the view tab while you're in calendar and change the view by default the view is calendar change it to a list oh then what happens it just becomes like a simple calendar this is my calendar and when you go to list view it just becomes a list then you can multi-select then you can do whatever you want very 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 simple that's how you do any kind of bulk operation bulk select bulk copy bulk delete using the list view. So what is important to remember here? Go to the view tab and change the view to list view. Then it becomes like inbox. Every entry, every calendar entry, just a row. And then you can manage it better. Fine. Let's go to the next one. Micromanagement I have already talked about. But there is one more very, very common problem all of us face. What is that problem? Let's say I have a calendar. I am supposed to do this work and I have said, okay, this work will take some amount of time. And in micromanagement, I have already said, this is 15 minutes, I will do this. 15 minutes, I'll find images. 15 minutes, I'll create the outline. Now in real life, what happens? That doesn't work. You realize suddenly that I am trying to find images and this was supposed to happen in what? 12.40 to 12.50, 10 minutes, but actually it has taken half an hour. How do you remind yourself that this time is going out? You are exceeding time. So that's why you need a timer. Very, very simple tool. I will give you the link that is a timer. What you need is a timer like this. I use this timer for, I think, 15 years now. This is a very simple freeware kind of tool called Xnote Stopwatch. You can also download it. I will give you the link for this in the description. So what happens in this particular tool is very simple. If you have planned to do something in say 10 minutes, what you do is go here and set the timer 
to whatever time you want, let's say 10 minutes. And then what will happen at the end of 10 minutes, if you want, it will beep to remind you that 10 minutes are over. So now actually you can understand that, oh, I am exceeding time. Let me hurry up, extend the time, whatever. But at least you are aware of the fact that you planned this much and this is what has happened. After the timer is over, you can restart it or count up or just close it. It's up to you. Very, very useful tool. So that's the timer part of it. So with that, we are going to end today's session. I hope you found this useful. And if you found this useful, remember to subscribe to my channel and also check out my blog. There are a lot of useful articles there, thousand plus articles. And we have a plan of action to have many such live sessions coming up. I'm also going to paste a link of upcoming sessions in the description and the chat window. So with that, let me finish this session formally. See you next time. And now we will take questions if there are any.